Number one, sobriety. Without sobriety, I would have not ever been able to have rewritten my life story. Without sobriety, I wouldn't be here in front of you. Without sobriety, this wouldn't be here. And without sobriety, chances are I wouldn't be here either. As I told you yesterday, we were, we're going to break down the series of um, things that I mentioned in the TikTok that I did. And to refresh your memory, I'm gonna put it up here really quick so that way you can see what we're talking about just in case you didn't see yesterday's episode. Go look at yesterday's episode. But just in case you haven't, here's the TikTok that I'm talking about. So I did this TikTok just, um, it, again, it was a TikTok challenge, uh, basically stating crazy facts about your life. And I can, um, I could have listed all sorts of crazy things that I did. I had so many years of anger, so many years of addiction, so many years of just basically scraping by and not really realize, not realizing how lucky I am to still be alive. And I could have written all sorts of things like that, but that's not the message that I wanted for that. I wanted to be able to give the message of hope of, re of hitting the reset button, hope of being able to take um, your life back and hope that you can rewrite your story. So um, jumping right into um, the, first, the first item that I listed, because without that item, this wouldn't be here. With, again, without that item, I don't think I would have been here. And that item is my sobriety. Now, I've been sober for six or seven years. Okay, I figured it out. My sobriety date, I got sober in February of 2015. Now, um, to give you a reference, this is the, I found this picture, and this is the last picture I took before I got sober. And I wanna show you what I look like um, before I got sober. So this is me. This is me before I got sober. And now I want to explain to you um, a little bit more of when I say I got sober, where I was um, just in life. So I was drinking daily and to give you reference on a really good day, like, wow, I don't even feel like, like I have um, been drinking would be a six pack. My average daily was a 12 pack, and on um, bad days, I would drink an 18 pack of Coors Light a day. Not a healthy habit. Um, on top of that, I was smoking over a pack a day of cigarettes, and I had a gambling addiction. So not only was I killing myself on the inside by drinking and smoking, I was gambling away every bit of money I was making. So I was in a vicious cycle of addiction. I remember waking up one day and I had just spent um, an all-nighter at the casino. I had gambled away money that I did not have. And I remember rolling over and thinking to myself, is this all that it's going to be? Is this going to be my legacy? Is this all that my life had had for me? Is this my story? Is this just the way it was going to end? And so I'm laying there and I'm like, I have no money. I'm hungover. I feel sick. My children don't like me. If they ever have grand, if they if they ever have children, my grandchildren are never going to be around me. And I was like, no. No, I, I don't want this. I don't want this to be, um, I don't want this to be my legacy. I, I, I just am not going to accept this. So then I'm like, um, wow, okay, this is kind of cool. This is a new thought that I hadn't had, had I had never had. And um, I'm like, okay, uh, well, what's, what do you want to change? I mean, I know I didn't want to drink anymore, but what do you want to change? I'm like, I just want to be happy. That's all I wanted to be. I, I just wanted to be happy and I knew my addictions were keeping me from being happy. So I'm like, okay, N again, new thought. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I wanna be happy. There, I said it. Then 
this thought and then the reality set in, I did not know how to be happy. I did not know, I didn't know, I just didn't know what happiness felt like. I had a tough childhood, I, w I had a horrible marriage, and I went from a horrible marriage into divorce, into divorce, um, I went, I just spiraled into the addiction. The addiction led me um, to where I was that Saturday morning. And looking back at the path, I'm like, okay, I, I, I can't remember being happy. How do I be happy? And I was like, I don't know, Lonnie, how do you figure out anything else that you, you can't figure out when you're, you know, you don't know the answer? You Google it. And that is exactly what I did. I laid there and I Googled how to be happy. It was very simple. It was like, write down what you like about yourself, write down the things that you don't like about yourself and write down the things that you can change. Put them in the order that you can change first and start making changes. And I'm like, doing. that seems horribly simple. Then I was like, and then the fear, the fear kicked in. You know, the fear kicked in of what happens if, if I, if I can't do it, you know, what happens if, if I'm, if I'm unable to break this cycle and then all these doubts started going in my head and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, what's going to happen. And that's when I started getting angry. I wasn't getting angry at myself. I was getting angry. I was getting angry at the addiction. I was getting angry at, at the things that were robbing me of my happiness. And I've always been, I've always been a fighter. Um, I was raised to um, hold up for yourself. You know what, number one rule, you have to hold up for yourself. So I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna let them bully me. I'm not gonna let, you know, my addiction push me around. I'm gonna do it. Now, I knew I had to stop drinking. I knew that the drinking was the catalyst of, of all of the, um, the sadness that I was feeling. So I'm like, okay, well, I have to stop drinking. But I, every time I smoke, I want to drink. And every time I smoke, I want to drink. And every time I drink, I want to go to the casino. And then when I'm at the casino, I smoke. And then I drink more. And then I gamble more. And then I'm like, you know, Eleni, you don't matter. You know, your, your life is worthless. Just smoke and drink and gamble more. So I saw this, this vicious circle. It was like a triangle circle. It was just horrible. And I got to tell you, out of all of my addictions, the ones that I still struggle with the most is gambling. So even talking about gambling, I feel like somebody came and punched me in the stomach, but I um, acknowledge it and I let it go. So there you go. So I have this vicious cycle and I'm like, well, I guess if I want to stop drinking, I'm going to have to stop all of them. So I'm like, that's it, Lonnie. You know what? Come Monday morning, you do not get to drink, you do not get to smoke, and you do not get to gamble. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I still remember the anxiety. Come Monday morning, I get up and I instantly, you know, I get up early and I just go straight to work. You know what, because I never smoke and I never drank and I never gambled at work. So my brain was already geared to not crave these things because I couldn't do them at work. So I got to work and I'm like, okay, I made it here. No, you know, I didn't smoke. So there you go. I, I am um, on my way. So I'm sitting there and at my desk and it was like 11 o'clock and I'm like, holy moly, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to cut that off. And then I'm like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I'm like, okay, Lonnie, you can't go home. That's just it. You cannot go home straight after work because my pattern was get up, have some cigarettes, go to work. As soon as five o'clock hit and everybody left because nobody knew about my addictions. I was very good at hiding them. So as soon as everybody left, I'd start smoking. Um, I'd go straight home. I would open up my first beer and I would not stop drinking until I passed out. So I'm like, I can't go home because if I go home, I'm going to want to repeat that pattern. So I'm like, that's it, I'm gonna go to the movies. You know what, I have to break my, my pattern, I have to do something different. So I um, called my son, 
the one my son Robert who lives with me um, he's you, you can you can meet my sons on my podcast that I have um, that I do and I we um, record it and put it on my channel but Robert was about a year ahead of me in sobriety he quit a year a year and a month before me so I called Robert and I'm like Robert dude I can't go home I'm gonna go to the movies I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go and I just have to break the, the habit and he's like, awesome. He goes, I'll meet you there. I'll go with you. And I still remember the movie we saw. We, we went to the Dollar Theater and I saw Jackass. No, I saw Grandpa, Grandpa's Boy um, with Johnny Knoxville. And I sat there in the theater and I'm like, I laughed and I got my mind off of my, my addiction habit. And I'm like, Phew, okay, I made it through the movie, but I have to go home eventually. So. I went straight home and I went straight to bed. And I woke up the next morning and that was the first time I had gone 24 hours without drinking or smoking um, for probably 10, 15 years. It was that long since I had given my body a 24 hour break. And it felt good. And I'm like, okay, rinse and repeat. I gotta do this again. So I got up, I went to work and I'm like, well, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, day two, I can't go to the movies every night. I'm eventually gonna have to figure out something to do. I'm like, okay, Lonnie, you can go home, but you have to do something different. Immediately, you have to start changing your habit. So I went home, I grabbed my dog and I went for a really super long walk. Came back and I'm like, okay, I'm going to bed. And I went, I went straight to bed. Woke up on day three rinse and repeat got up went straight to work and i'm like okay day number three go home walk your dog go to bed and i truthfully i did that for a couple of weeks i slept a lot and i was just breaking the habit i think my body was just rege regenerating and rejuvenating so eventually i'm like okay well this is pretty good i don't have to go to sleep as soon as i get home um so what I started doing is, and it's, and I hear this all the time that you, you have a tendency to, um, to replace one habit with another. And what I, I, what I eventually did is I started eating a lot of sugar. I started eating a lot of sugar because there's a lot of sugar in alcohol. So I basically became addicted to cookies and brownies and um, I knew that and I knew I was gaining weight and I knew um, that it wasn't healthy, but I also picked my battles carefully. I'm like, okay, Lonnie, you can have brownies and you can have cookies because once you get to a certain point, um, you're going to stop doing that and you're gonna start exercising and you're gonna live a healthy lifestyle. So I gained like 45 pounds. I ate a lot of brownies, but I did it. Um, another side note, I still have to, 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 even today, I have to be very careful about eating sugar. Sugar will trigger things into me where if I have one cookie, I want 12. So if I do eat a cookie, I have to be like, you get one, that's it, and you don't get any more. So going back, so now I've, I've been sober a couple of months, you know, I'm um, feeling really good. and. The next really big um, catalyst for me, the next big um, turning point for me in my sobriety is um, I started changing again my habits. I started exercising. And um, I remember I wanted to go for a hike. I felt like I was to the point where I wanted to get out there and I wanted to prove something to myself. And I picked a, a hike here that's about um, a four mile hike. And it usually takes, now it takes me about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes to get to the top um, and then back. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I wanna go for a hike. So again, my oldest son, Robert, he's like, let's go. And I have to tell you, um, I got there, I drove there, got out of the car, walked across the street and I'm like, okay, I'm winded. I'm like, no, Lonnie, you have to make it to the top. If, if you make it to the top, I, what I was telling myself is if you make it to the top, you can do anything. If you can make it to the top, you can stay sober. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I have, I have a lot of willpower, let's do this. So I started walking, you know, 
an hour later, I was not even a quarter of the way up there and I was like doubled over and crawling, but I made it. It took me four hours to get to the top and I made it. Scared the bejeez, the, the beetles, let's just say that. I don't know what the right word is, but I scared the, the poop out of my son because he thought for sure I was going to have a heart attack. Um, he's like, yep, he goes, I kept on trying to figure out how I was going to get a helicopter up here to, to get you off the mountain, but I did it. And it was my personal victory. And I told myself the entire way, if I can make it to the top, if I can do that physically, I can stay sober for the rest of my life. And I have been sober since that one day that I rolled over um, and Googled how to be happy. Before that day happened, I just want you to know, I tried so many times to get sober before then. I would, I would be like, I'm gonna get sober, today's the day, and it wouldn't stick. And I would go into a spiral of horrible drinking and gambling, and then two months later, I'd be like, today's the day, I'm gonna quit. And then I would spiral out of control. My, my message to you on that one is if you try and you fail, keep trying. If you have tried and you failed and you want to try again, try again with resolve. Do not feel that it is, um, that it's helpless because it's not helpless and it's not hopeless. Number one, today was sober, taking back your power. Taking back your power is going to be a cool subject and I'm going to love talking, talking to you about that because like I mentioned earlier, I was able to get sober when I got angry. I was able to get sober when I had the resolve of like, no, I am, I'm going to fight this addiction. So to me, it was about taking back my power. So I'm super excited to be talking with you about that one tomorrow. And again, um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you enjoyed my story. I hope that if you have any questions out there, you feel free to leave any questions because like I said, I will, I will give you my answer and, um, and you know what, the way I look at it is I didn't go through all of this for nothing and I went through all of this to be able to share it with you. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the like button. If you like, stick around, see what I'm gonna talk about next, you can hit subscribe. If you would like to leave a comment, please do that down below. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias, those are all listed down below also. And also if you um, wanna go shopping in my Poshmark, that's down below. So until tomorrow, um, tell yourself something kind. If you are sober curious, if you were on that journey, um, I 100% support you. Please support yourself and don't give up. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.